here today with Patrick Powers, who we were thinking, when did we meet? And it was around 2011, a long, mm -hmm. long time ago, when you were organizing very, very large networking events. And I was just moving into the tech space and wanted to meet some startup-y sort of people and saw your event. I think it was on Meetup, probably mm -hmm. it was on Meetup. Yep. Uh, I went along and I'm, there must have been what? over a hundred people in that room, maybe, maybe more than that. There were, there were a yeah, lot of back, back in 2011, like we could, sometimes we had over 200 and sometimes even more. Yeah. Amazing number of people. And I actually met a guy there who turned out to be a web developer and helped me develop one of my first websites for frugal, which eventually went on to raise some money. He didn't charge me a penny. He was a super nice guy. And mm -hmm. had it not been for your event, I would not have met him. But wow. awesome. yeah, so there we go. So thank you. But we're here because I really want to talk to you about networking. I know that it's something that people are very afraid of. They don't really understand how to do it. And they struggle with knowing where to find good events, how to pitch themselves and all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. just give me a background. How did you actually get into the whole event-based yeah. worky sort of space? It's it's kind of a crazy story. Like, like first of all, I'm from Denmark. Uh, so that's hence my weird accent. Um, uh, and when I was 21, I started my first business and it was absolutely spectacular fiasco. Went bankrupt within a year. Uh, and the reason for that is that I had no marketing skills, no sales skills, and I had a lot of shit in my head, to be honest. I, uh, I, I, when I grew up, I was extremely overweight, and I'm not exaggerating. Uh, actually, about seven years ago, I lost 150 pounds. Wow. Um, so I was dealing with being bullied a lot when I was a kid, and we grew up in a very rural town, so I never had the practice of, of social interaction with, with kids my own age. So bottom line is I was extremely shy and a very, very poor social skills. And um, at a certain point, I said, this is just not acceptable. This is not who I want to be. I will fix this, however long it will take. So I started gradually learning more about sales and communication and marketing and presenting yourself and, and networking. Uh, and um, like, look, once I understood how powerful networking is, I never looked back. It literally is one of the most transformational things that you will ever learn. And um, so there's a lot of things that people can learn about networking, but I'll also say is that they, they, they mess up a couple of things. Uh, and one of the things that they mess up is weirdly enough that they think they don't know how to do it. And actually in some ways they actually do know how to do it. They just don't do what they know. And I'll get back to that. Okay. <laughs> I'll, go, okay. I'll get back to this because it's, I know it sounds a little bit weird, but it'll it'll all be clear. So, um, long story short, I started I started my first business twenty one, went bankrupt, then another one, another one, another one, home based business, and just over 15, 14 years or fourteen years, I started fifteen different companies, and that went bust, right? Or some of them uh, home based businesses, network marketing, and that kind of stuff. And then two thousand three, I said. I, I can't stand my life anymore. I, I I will succeed no matter what in this network marketing industry. Uh, at that point, I was a uh, temp agent in a, in a warehouse moving furniture, and I'd done some part-time taxiing. Uh, I also uh, was a full-time taxi driver at some point. Anyway, when I made this decision, it literally transformed my life overnight. Uh, I found a company with a product I could really get behind, and within a very, very short time, I was full-time in that company and built a team of... Uh, uh, about a thousand people, yeah, about a thousand people the first year, and that grew to uh, four. No, sorry, what I was saying, no, no, four, four and a half thousand people the first year, and 10,000 people the second year. Wow, right. yeah, and then I retired and became stupid, as I say, right? I became lazy and stupid because I thought oh, everything is taken care of forever and I'm rich forever. And uh, I just I became uh, kind of entitled and bored and sold that company. And um, uh, I was I was just overconfident and thought, hey, now I've built this once, I know everything, and I can do it again. And um, so there was there was still some things that I needed to learn, um, and you know it still is. 
but I ended up in a very, very, very uh, precarious situation uh, for a couple of years in London. I was I was constantly behind rent. I was in a massive amount of stress because I was just I was really worried about living on the streets and um, started this little meetup group to create connections uh, and just gain connections for my consulting and training and coaching. And uh, it sort of started taking off like fairly, fairly well. Uh, and then within, I think within two and a half years, uh, there was a very dramatic thing that happened in my life and got a very small cash injection from one of my friends that I put into pay-per-click on, on Facebook. Oh, yeah. uh, and I test, tested Facebook pay-per-click well enough that I knew it was working. I just need a little bit of money. And one of my friends gave me two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. And uh, first month, I think I put four, four and a half, 450 pounds into pay-per-click. And we went from approximately 60 people at the event to about 120 people overnight, yeah. right? Uh, and then the rest is history. We became the biggest business meetup group in Europe. Uh, we kept on growing, growing, growing. And now we're the second biggest business meetup group in the world and the biggest in Europe and uh, almost 30,000 members. Wow. Wow. Can I ask, do you have 30,000 emails then? Unfortunately not. And if I like, honestly, if I had, I would, I would be a much, much, much richer man, right? Yeah. <laughs> because the, the unfortunate thing on meetup is that you can, you can send a message to people, you can email them, but you don't have the email addresses. No, I know. So because of that, it's very hard to separate yourself. Like, you know, when you send a message, it just looks like, oh, it's just another email message. Plus, when people get all these messages on meet on Meetup, they tend to unsubscribe. They they're still a member, but they unsubscribe for the notifications. Therefore, people tend to not get your messages. But that's a whole nother thing. Oh, right. So yeah. this group was built up, and you know, one of the things that I remember from probably you know one of those groups is before it was thirty thousand. It, and it was probably maybe a few thousand when I joined, was that there was some structure to it that for me, a novice networker, made it easy for me to understand how this little world worked. Explain some of those little icebreaker things that you did, because I do think that they're important for people to understand that there is there are ways that you can, you know, get ahead of other people in the group by just part, which is what I did. I just took sure. the opportunities you gave me and said, I'm going to put myself up, up for those. And therefore I separated myself out from the herd fairly early on, you know? Yeah. Well, the first thing I think I'm going to say about networking, like two things, first of all, it's one of the most powerful then life transforming things you'll ever learn when you learn how to do it the right way, because as you're building the network, um, the, the stronger and stronger it becomes you find out that even a very, very few connections can open up doors to life-changing opportunities and other people, business, you know, business deals, uh, personal relationships. Yeah. Uh, it's it's amazing. Unfortunately, the, most people don't do it the right way. And I'm also going to say, like, you can learn it. So first of all, it can transform your life, and you can learn it. I used to be incredibly shy, right? And if I learned it. I guarantee you everybody can learn it. Um, number two, uh, most people, they approach it in a way that's very self-serving. Mm -hmm. And that is just the wrong way to do it. You have to, you have to approach it as a servant, mm -hmm. right? You have to be there to serve people. Uh, number three, it can take a while to learn it, to really become good at it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's most of the time, it's actually stuff you have to unlearn, but we'll I'll come back to that in a, in, a, in a moment. It might take a year. It might take two years, three years for you to really learn it. Uh, like I have, I have some coaching programs coming up and I have a book coming up, by the way, called uh, how, how to make people like and trust you in three minutes flat. And uh, if you like, when you really learn this, you can learn to build trust extremely fast, Yeah. but it might take you a while to get there. Right. Just like any anything else. The weird thing is when people come into business, um, like say you wanted to become a concert pianist and you get you get the the notes for Rachmaninoff's third uh, piano piano concert, uh, which is a masterpiece. 
but it's absolute masterpiece. I don't know how much you know about classical music, but I used to be uh, actually studying to become a musician, oh, right. uh, okay. playing the, play the <laughs> keyboard. But, and the thing is that if people got handed Rachmaninoff's third, they wouldn't expect anybody to want to listen to that the first 50 times or hundred times they play it, right? Because it's gonna sound horrible. So even though it's a masterpiece, but it's going to sound horrible. It's the same thing with networking. I can give you the absolute keys to be incredibly influential, but it will take you a while to master it at the level where when you open your mouth and saying what you say, that it's going to sound like the masterpiece and people suddenly will start to go, oh, I think I want to do business with you. Or, oh, I think I like you. Oh, I think I'll open doors for you, right? Okay. Um, so be patient with it. Be serious about it be patient with it uh, and be a servant, okay? Because the worst thing you can do is is try to go in and just pitch, pitch, pitch. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things people say, well, I don't know how to do this. And I'm telling you, actually you do. And here's why I know that. And it's because, well, unless you actually have no friends and never, ever, ever had any friends, you actually already know how to do this mm -hmm. because you are, to, to be good at networking, you need to do the same thing that you do to create friends. You just need to do it more focused and uh, hopefully speed it up a little bit. And there are many ways that you can speed it up, but you will be doing the same thing. The problem is that people will come in and think, what can I say to, to get people to buy from me? Yeah, yeah. And that's just not what you do if you go to a, par if you go to a par party at your best friends. Yeah. You don't go to that party thinking, how can I sell them, right? Mm -hmm. You go in and you start asking, uh, so, hey, who are you? How, you know, who do you know at this party? Why, you know, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. uh, and you just ask questions to get to know them, right? And, th and that's kind of what you need to do. I mean, that's the very, very, very broad overview of what you need to do is simply be interested in people and kind of doing the same things that you do normally in a, in a normal uh, cultural, uh, you know, a social setting. Yeah. Right? And I think, you know, one of the things that I've heard you say, and I think it's so important is listen, right? Listen, you are there to listen. And for me, networking is about asking those kind of, you know, they're the same questions you ask at every event, right? Like, do you know anybody here? How'd you find out about this? Like, you know, what do you do? Whatever. But then beyond that, you have to listen. Last night, I went to a dinner party networking event. I sat down. There was a guy next to me that was talking mainly about himself. And I was getting very quickly turned off. He was shutting me out of the conversation. And I was feeling kind of a little bit angry about the fact that, you know, I wasn't being asked anything. And, and he was just talking about himself, talking about himself. And then to a woman, she was listening then the then he turned to me and said something like, oh, or she said, you know, oh, we didn't mean to shut you out, you know, because I arrived a bit late. And then he mentioned that because I'm American and he mentioned he was going to live in Miami. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was like, oh, you know, I have a friend that lives in Fort Lauderdale. I do this. God, Miami's a cool place. Then we started talking about Miami. Then we started mm -hmm. a conversation. Yeah. That it right because you found a you found a point of commonality that's right and yeah. i think that for me has always been my trick with networking is you will no matter how much you may think initially i don't like you <laughs> i will always try and find that point where we can meet somewhere yeah. somewhere that's common and then out of that you build trust and once you start building trust that's when I think you can start to have those more nuanced conversations sure. that might ultimately lead to, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Let's swap cards. And I suppose that's the other thing is like cards. Do you still believe in cards? Uh, sort of. Um, it's more important that I get their card if they have one so I can follow up with them, right? So <laughs> um, the card itself will have very little uh, effect, right? Uh, and I would say if there's one thing about cards, put your put your face on there. Um, it, like no matter how ugly you are, 
I'm like, but just put your face on there. Uh, and lots of people say, oh, I don't look good. I don't like it. Well, you know, science doesn't care whether you like it or not. And it's scientifically proven that the more times people have seen your ugly mock on a picture, the more they will trust you when they meet you in the real world. Amazing. So, yeah, it, it, this is scientifically proven. And it, it, it just like if you think of it, it makes complete sense because think of your favorite actor. Yeah. Right. Would you trust the, your favorite actor over some stranger on the street? Of course you would. Right. Like, who do you want to have a drink with your favorite actor or some stranger on the street? Your favorite yeah. actor. Why? Well, the favorite actor is a professional liar. <laughs> they are. They're, 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 they made money to play a role that they're not. Right. And, and yet we, we like them and trust them because we have seen them before. Right. right. So, so that's very important. And that also applies to social media, uh, you know, see your face, the more times, um, you know, the more times, the better, but a couple, couple of things I will say about like, you know, something I've learned the last couple of years to even speed my uh, trust building up tremendously is to like, first of all, in terms of listening, understand that to get people to like and trust you lots of people think oh, how how can i impress people how can i get them to uh listen to my offer and all that kind of stuff the most the most powerful way the fastest way you can get people to do that is not to actually think about how to get them to like you mm -hmm. and how to impress them but it's how to get them to like themselves more. If you get people to like themselves more after you leave them, you will have them. Ah, right? yeah. So, so my whole purpose when I'm talking with people is to find something where I can truly and genuinely tell them that I'm impressed about it or that I really like this part about them or that they're amazing about this or that. Because if you make them, if you, if you raise up their self, esteem mm. uh they will love you they'll absolutely love you so i'd say initially completely forget yourself and focus on making that person feel amazing about themselves yeah, yeah right and 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 the second thing is really powerful i ask something called i call it transformational questions uh as opposed to what normal people or people normally do uh asking transactional questions so a transactional questions is what uh, basically it's a question that can be answered without really any brain uh, power, like any thought to it. Okay. So for example, oh, so uh, how, uh, you know, how are you done? Uh, how are you, you know, how are you doing? How, how was your week? Uh, yeah, it was great. Okay. Or, or, you know, who do you know at this event? Oh, I know Bob, right. Yeah. It's something that can be immediately answered without any uh, deeper thought. Now, a transformational question, you have to access a deeper thought. And, a, and an example could be, instead of just simply asking, so how was your week? Simply ask them, what was the best part of your week? Right? Nice. What, was, yeah. what was the best? And people are like, oh, they have to think about that. Right? And so, and then they go in and find a moment in that week that was really special for them. Mm -hmm. And then the re when they reveal that, they also reveal something about them that's really personal and that, that's really special. Yeah. Therefore, opening up a, a, a window into that person's soul. Yeah. And while they're sharing this special moment, they open up to you. They 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 bond and they trust with you. Yeah. And that is absolutely magical. I mean, it's it's so powerful. It's almost ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can see. And all of these little tips are so useful because they are a they're really practical i mean these are things that anybody can do <laughs> these are not you know yep. people think this stuff is hard but it's not it's just about knowing how to do it and to be conscious about when you're engaging with somebody about finding you know that special moment that point of commonality what is it that makes us human and wants to make each other you know think i want to see you again i want to talk to you again i'm going to get your number you know you're so interesting and i've really benefited from meeting you tonight you know i'm going to follow up on this 
My next yeah. question is about the follow-up because the follow-up I think is also really important and it's something I'm crap at, which is <laughs> you meet a whole load of people, right? You're a bit overwhelmed. Everybody's saying, oh, let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Last night, this dinner party was like 10, 11 people, four or five people there said, I, let's follow up on this. I've really enjoyed meeting you. We don't live that far from each other. I've done nothing today. Oops. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is what almost everybody does. They all, that, and that's why it's so easy to outcompete people because they they're not typically very good at networking. And if they're if they're pretty good at networking, they suck at following up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I suck at following up. I mean, right. you got any little tips for following up that don't suck yeah. up all your time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's lots of things you can do. The, the first thing you have to understand is that in the follow-up, as well as in everything else, uh, you need to stand out. You need to be different because if you're not different, you're not, you're not being remembered. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, first of all, your, your purpose in the follow-up is still not to sell them. It is not to sell them. And if you try to sell them at that point, it is, it is just too early. It's just like, I ask this question always on my students and, you know, when I do presentations, like if, if, if you met a girl or a guy at a bar and you walk up to them straight and like, you say, Hey, you look really great. Like, do you want to get married? Is, do you want to get married? Is, uh, is that the wrong question? And people say, yeah, it's the wrong question. It's, no, it's not. It's not the wrong question. It's the wrong timing. <laughs> it's the wrong timing because there is no relationship. Right. And and still, when you're following up, there's still not not enough relationship to even like bring up the business. Yeah. The best thing is actually to let them do it. But I'll get back to that. Um, so the first thing, one, you've got to you, you know don't don't hurry, don't be in a hurry. And number two, uh, stand out. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing, like make some notes as you are leaving that meeting. Make notes about these people. Yeah. What impressed you about them? right what was unique about them yeah. what like what potential could you see in them that they didn't see in themselves and whatever you can let them know within 24 hours what you enjoyed about the meeting what impressed you about them uh or something again that can build them up yeah yeah right and and then uh if they get back to you, which they probably will, because now they're like, wow, this is a super nice person, right? Uh, then simply say, you know, hey, I would love to know more about the business the business that you do. And if there is a way that we can uh, benefit each other, if there is a synergy between what we do, are you up for having a quick meeting on Zoom or having a cup of coffee or whatever it is to just explore uh, a little bit further what we do? Yeah. And, and that's it. And are you when you go into these networking events and you meet people obviously because of the fact that you know often you're the host right i suspect you get inundated with people who want to do follow-ups with you and want to you yep. know get to know you and go out for a coffee or zoom or whatever it happens to be how much or how little do you go to these events with some very serious intent as far as I'm, you know, I might meet someone and I like them, but I don't think there's going to be much in it, in this for me, in this relationship versus, you know, I can see there's might be some potential here. Obviously it's early days. You don't really know what it is, but how do you separate the people that you want to continue a relationship with versus the people that potentially you don't see the value, especially yeah. because life is short and you're there to try and, you know, ultimately generate some business, right? That's sure. Absolutely. So, so first of all, I, these days I try not to do real meetings, uh, but at least initially have a short zoom Right. Okay. Just just to clarify a little bit more, is there even a, a purpose for us to meet? Yeah. Right. And the first thing I, I I kind of look for in those meetings is do I like this person? Yeah. Do I do I like them? Do I like their energy? Right. 
uh and and to be honest it's, that's almost entirely what i look at um you know i mean i could be looking for specific characteristics in terms of you know the type of business they do or whatever you know and that that might be relevant for some some people listening to this uh but i would say if if you kind of find a way to click and then there's a good energy between the two i would say go out and have a coffee meeting with them because even though that person might not uh be relevant to your business right now if you treat that person really really nicely uh, I guarantee you, they will remember you. And then suddenly six months later, they're at an event and they meet someone that are looking for the kind of products or services that you sell. And they oh, I know this nice lady, Suzanne, you should meet her. Yeah. And, and, and that's happened so many times for me. I had, uh, I remember one particular time, uh, there was a person that came to our events and a very, um, very, very shy person. Uh, and it's actually happened uh, several times. And and I use since I used to be shy, I guess I, I care about them a little bit more than than other people would. Uh, so I always treat them like really, really nicely. And then I make sure I introduce them to other people so that they don't feel, uh, you know, scared about approaching other people that event, you know, but I make sure I introduce them anyway. Um, suddenly you know this person which i had not been in contact with probably for a year and had not been to my event for a year suddenly some person contacts me and say hey uh this lady uh introduced me to you and said that you're a great marketing copywriting and sales funnel expert and i'm uh looking for you know a sales funnel guy and uh, i was like who is this person and i started thinking back it's like oh my god is this person i met at my event like a year ago right yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so don't, don't, if I would say to begin with, yes, if you're spending the time of going out and meeting with them, I would filter them out a little bit uh, via Zoom meeting first. Yeah. Uh, but then I, after that, I wouldn't be too strict in terms of, oh, this person has to like precisely fit my criteria for what I'm looking at for my business. Yeah. I mean, I think that for, you know, for everybody that's doing this and everybody that's listening, what I what I hear as well is, A, don't burn any bridges. And I'm a big believer in just not burning bridges. You know, it doesn't matter what's happened at that event. I've done my best to be a nice person. I've done my best to be generous with my time, to show enthusiasm for whatever it is they're telling me. I've tried to do my best and whatever comes of it, that's I've done I've done the best I can I can yep. do mm -hmm. and you know sometimes I do walk away thinking I didn't like you very much and then you know like you say a year later somebody says oh she's the one over there that does that and you're like who, the, yep. who was that so yep. you know for me it's just always about go with a spirit of generosity go yep. with a spirit of I don't know what's going to happen but I think the main thing that I'm taking away from all of this, which I think is the most, is the essence of all of this, is don't go to sell. Mm -hmm. Go to make an impact. Go to make an and, impact. You know, like when I say give value, people say, well, like I, I, my products is too expensive to sample or I can't sample my products or whatever. Well, when you're thinking too transactional, yeah. think how can you make an impact on this person that has nothing to do with your business, exactly. but as a human being, <laughs> and as a human being. I have I have dealt with uh, people that are like multimillionaires and even even billionaires, right? Where people are like people are like what what can I give somebody who is that you know successful? Just this exact same thing that you can do with your family members, right? Yeah. You can be a human being, <laughs> listen to them. That person that is mega rich, sometimes they've even a bigger need. For having somebody who's actually genuinely wanting to listen to them and not wanting something from them okay. that that by, by doing that you give them something of such tremendous value that they will treasure that forever yeah so true that is a great way to end this discussion thank you so much patrick and it's been You're welcome so great to see you again after all these years and i'm really grateful yep. for you giving us your time and You're welcome all your, you know, knowledge about this. And I think many people are going to find it super valuable. So thanks it was a lot. 
it's fun to see you again and, and be part of this. And I hope to see you and uh, everybody else listening in, in the real world soon where the real magic happens. <laughs> Thank you.